tried to establish this with Keir Starmer uh, last week. The fact that this is the Brexit election and what the Labour Party Brexit proposal actually means. We need to find out how you're going to get this great new deal negotiated with the EU. How you would then get it through Parliament and then put it to the people. Now, can I just ask you personally, are you at the moment leave or remain? I think that uh, we should remain in the EU. I've always said that. Uh, but our policy is to put it to the people and to get them to decide. So I suppose in the end it doesn't really matter what I think. What matters is what the public thinks. And we need to put a proper deal to them versus remain and find out what they say. That's okay. what our policy is. Okay, but just to establish, so you're the Shadow Foreign Secretary and presumably would be involved in the negotiations over this great new deal. What motivation would you have as a Remainer to get a great deal to leave? Well, because we're going to be putting it back to the people, so they may decide that they want to, to leave, and so we need to have the best deal possible for jobs and the economy in case that's what the public decides that they want to do. But if it's a fantastic deal, wouldn't it persuade people to vote for it, in which case leave well, would win the referendum again? Well. Listen, it's our duty to make sure we get the best deal possible. I personally would see it as an insurance policy because I would hope that the public would decide to leave. But in the end, it's going to be up to them whether Sorry, we leave or whether we remain. Sorry, you'd hope that people would decide to Sorry, leave. To, to remain. So right. So you can see why decide. people are confused here because yeah, you no, would sorry, go and negotiate. A slip, of, slip, of, slip of the tongue. Yeah, on my but part. I mean, but it illustrates yeah. a point, doesn't it? That actually you go now, and it negotiate. Now illustrates that it's quarter to seven in the morning. I'm sorry. I, uh, what, I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that we would negotiate the best deal that we possibly could and that would be one that would look after jobs and the economy. We would put it to the people and we would say, now look, three years ago, four years ago, you decided that you wanted to leave, but this is what it looks like. You know, and there are compromises. You won't get everything that you want because, frankly, there is no perfect leave deal where you can get everything you were promised during the referendum. But this is what reality looks like versus remain. What do you want to do? How many, how many of the top shadow cabinet are leavers? I don't know. You'll have to ask them. Can you, name, the, can you name one? Uh, I'm not going to get into personalities here. I because don't want in the one end, name. Is there one member of that shadow cabinet, top, top tier, who's well, a lever? Jeremy think, Corbyn, for instance. Well, we, know think, that, we know that many, many of your, of your voters, Labour voters, voted to leave. But do, does anybody yeah. at the top of the shadow cabinet actually want us to leave? And if I the think, answer is you can't think of any which is in itself rather telling, what kind of deal do you think you're going to screw from the EU when they so, think that the entire shadow cabinet, from the top down, basically doesn't want to leave? And so they I, don't want us to leave either. So I think that one person who's on the record is saying that they are keen to leave is Ian Lavery. Um, he's the chair of the party and he represents a, a northern seat and I think he thinks quite quite strongly about that. I think the party is divided. It's fine. You know, that's, that's how it is. We have some people who think one way, we have some people who think the other, but what we're all agreed on is that we should put it back to the people and get them to decide when we've got a proper deal. We don't agree but with why Boris Johnson's deal. Here's my deal. problem. Why don't you just be more honest, really? Which is... I'm being completely honest you're with you. You're not really. What you're yes, really... You, all want, you want your cake and eat it, Labour. You've been sitting on this fence... So far, you've all got splinters, right? No. Here's, here's the bottom line. There, there is zero incentive of the EU... If you were to get into power and win this election, the EU knows that 99% of the shadow cabinet doesn't want to leave. They don't want us to leave either. And yet you want to try and persuade the public that somehow this is going to be fair-minded, that somehow you're going to go in there and hardball negotiate a brilliant deal with the EU. It makes zero sense. That it that would happen. It, Why it, would anybody around that table be looking to do a great deal for us to leave when 99% of you want to stay in? The point is this, is that it goes back to the people. The people will be the ones who will be deciding. And what do we do? You're we not going to give let, the people no, a choice on, let between... Me, let me talk. Let you me keep, talk. No, hang on. No, no you no, let no, me no. talk. You All keep right, saying the people. Go, go, go. go All on. right, I will. No, go, Thank you. Go, go I will.
All right, and, I could do that. And, and I could do that too. Answer a question break. If you give me a minute. All no. Right? Okay, but my point is, you must surely understand the point, which is, you keep saying we're going to give the public. You this said great... it a couple of times. Yeah, but and, you and keep I'd saying like to we're going to. You keep saying we're going to give the public this great choice to a great deal and remain. In fact, what's going to happen in reality, because nobody around that negotiating table actually wants to leave, you're going to have a very watered-down deal, which no one's going to think bears any relation to Brexit, or staying in. And then I put it to you, the public are given a choice, really, between a version of remain and full remain. Do I speak now? Yes. OK. <laughs> so... So the situation is this, is that we want to be able to negotiate a deal which has been the sort of deal that we have been talking to the Europeans about for more than three years, right? So it is being in a customs union, being close to a single market, having close alignment of rules and regulations. We have talked to them uphill and downdale about what it is that we would do and what our deal is. And we think that that's the best way of looking after jobs in the economy. And quite frankly, that's what Theresa May should have called us into a room about and said, what kind of way do you want to leave the European but Union? Emily and we would have told her. Staying part and of then, the customs union oh, means man, that we wouldn't be able to do trade deals with the rest of the world. Staying in the single market means that we'd have to sign up to the four freedoms, including freedom of movement. We'd still be paying in, but we wouldn't get any voting rights. I mean, it is just remain minus, isn't it? Being in a customs union means that we are not vulnerable to the likes of Donald Trump, who has been talking about trying to put the National Health Service on the table when it comes to negotiations with America on a trade deal. We've already heard, haven't we, about the way in which the government are preparing for us leaving the European Union by negotiating with U.S. pharmaceutical companies to make the National Health Service spend even more on American pharmaceuticals. And, you know, we, if we open up a trade deal to America, we could end up with all this chlorinated chicken and, and beef with all these hormones in. And, and basically, we're vulnerable because there we are, just as Britain... So and you don't when... want us to strike trade deals with the rest of the world. You I want think... to stay in the EU for the purposes of trade exclusively. So this is the point. People, Brexiteers, well... will look at your choice as you're offering in this second referendum and think it's actually not a choice at all because you're not offering a leave option. Okay, and as you are majority is... Remainers, you don't have an incentive let to me... offer a leave option. OK, so what's really important about, about the trade deal, and, and let me just... Let, please let me explain. So, so if we leave the European Union, right, it means that all the trade deals that we have had and negotiated, we have been negotiating with Europe and the rest of the world, will all cease. So when we leave the European Union, uh, after the transition period, we will have no trade deals with any Anybody. And we will have to start negotiating trade deals with the entire world and we will be doing it as ourselves as opposed to as ourselves plus Europe. So the question will be, so if I was Taiwan, for example, I might say, oh, well, you know, I know you've got a trade deal with you and Europe, but uh, and you want to negotiate something else. But there's a few things we'd like to kind of look at again. And because we are a smaller economy on our own, as opposed to being a bolt on to Europe, we're at a disadvantage. The larger a group we negotiate with, the better deals that we get. So you, okay. that's why, you don't that's want why to we're leave. In favor of the being, point no, is look, that you don't want to leave. You've that, already admitted that you're a Remainer. Susanna, I'm trying to tell you the sort of deal that we would negotiate and the reasons for it. The other good thing about being in a customs union is it doesn't half help with the whole issue of the Northern Irish border. You know, because if you're in a customs union, okay. it makes it much easier for goods to travel backwards and forwards, and you don't have to kind of keep doing all these okay. backward we... leaps the way in which the Tories have had to We're... in order to try and find a way through. Shut up, We're aware you've got a, a time-sensitive morning. So That's let's right. move to the issue, uh, another big issue, and this is really pertinent to your position, I think, because you may be Foreign Secretary in, in a few weeks' time. Trident. I've interviewed Diane Abbott, and we have together, Diane Abbott and John McDonnell and various other senior members of your party about this Trident situation. And there's been a lack of clarity. So I think it's very important, given you may be in government soon, that we get some clarity here. OK. Labour's position is that you support the renewal of Trident, which could be between 100 and 200 billion over 30 years. Is that correct? Our position is that the decision has been made and so we've moved on. Right, so the, the, the standing position of the party right now is that you support the renewal of the Trident nuclear missile programme. The standing position of the party at the moment is that the decision has been made and we're moving on. Do you agree with it as the Shadow Foreign Secretary? 
I believe in practical politics and a decision has been made, so we're moving on. Yeah, but do you support the use of the Trident missile system? You, you could be foreign secretary soon. Do I support the use of the Trident missile system? We will have a Trident missile system. We will use everything which is available to us to protect our country. OK, so the purpose of a nuclear deterrent is that you spend all this money on this sophisticated nuclear weaponry and it deters people because they believe you would actually use it. Jeremy Corbyn, your leader, is on the record as saying he would never fire a nuclear weapon. Can you explain to our viewers how that deterrent would work if the Prime Minister is Jeremy Corbyn and he has a stated position himself of never using a nuclear weapon. The use of a nuclear weapon is a decision on a level that no politician anywhere has to make. It is completely out on its own. And no one in the end knows whether how they would use it, whether they would use it, because it is it has such extraordinary <sighs> It has such extraordinary force and, 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 and millions of people can be killed. If we are in, a, in circumstances where we are under threat, it's impossible, I think, for any human to say whether they would be prepared to kill millions in but order he, to be able said, to protect. But he has said it. And, it's all and I think that... Jeremy and Corbyn I th has, I think, he has answered that question. That's my point. And he I has think, stated his position as he would never use a nuclear weapon. So, again, and, I put it to you, if he's Prime have, Minister... And you are foreign secretary, and this is, this could be very serious and very real mm. in four to five weeks' time. Would you use a nuclear weapon to defend this country if you had to? So Margaret Thatcher and generations of politicians and leaders have said that they are not prepared to say one way or the other but whether they would use. Said. Oh, come on, let me finish. So no leader has said one way or the other until very recently whether they were prepared to use the nuclear weapon or not. So we've had Conservative leaders recently saying they would press the button. We've had Labour people recently saying they wouldn't press the button. I'm certainly I'm of the view that it's best for us not to say one way or the other whether we would use it or not, just as we have done for generations. OK, but Jeremy... You know, so, so again, tens, I, I... Tens sorry, of years. Sorry to interrupt. Going I know back you don't like history, me interrupting. I just, I just like kind of being given 15 seconds to answer a question. Well, you've just literally been given a minute to answer a different all question. Right, well, I'm, I'm trying to do my best not to answer the question. Yeah, but if only you were answering the question. My question to you was very straightforward. Jeremy Corbyn has a stated position that he would never use a nuclear weapon. Can you explain to me, if you become the government in a few weeks' time, how the nuclear deterrent would work if the man in charge of ordering that use has said he would never use it. Where's the deterrent? I think that we... It's very difficult to imagine, realistically, in what circumstances you would use a nuclear deterrent. The circumstances might arise. It's very difficult to imagine how the dynamics would work before a decision was made one way or the other. Whether it would be one person's decision, whether it would be a group of people's decision. I think this is... This is not helpful in terms of, of being able to paint real pictures of what may happen in reality, because no one knows in what circumstances you might even, people might even say to you, use your nuclear deterrent now. You know, in well, what, let me how give you, bad, let me how bad okay, well, let me paint to you. How bad is it that you would then start saying, OK, allow I'm going to, to be prepared to, to kill a few million people? Allow me to give you a hypothetical. Nobody wants to use a nuclear weapon. No. Right, nobody, right? No, however, exactly. However, let me paint a picture to you. Right? A rogue state or Russia or some nefarious regime out there decides to attack us, right? which, which people fear may happen if there's a Labour government. They fear that because of Jeremy Corbyn's stated position about this kind of thing, it makes us vulnerable and weak. It well, so, 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 OK, so you're, you're, you're imagining a situ situation where, because Jeremy Corbyn has become Prime Minister, Russia decides to nuke us. No. Is that, is that the no. situation? No, let, okay. me, let right. me explain to you very clearly what I'm saying. Right. I'm saying you cannot rule out where an attack may come, right? History has shown that. Oh, if, if you give me a scenario, come I'm on. I'm giving you a scenario. It. So somebody uses some form of nuclear missile to attack somewhere in the north of England. And we right. have... So we're getting nuked by who? Well, by... By, by a rogue state but, or by a nefarious state or by some regime that's gone rogue. Who knows, right? I'm not guessing where the enemy may come from. What I'm okay. saying to you, here's the hypothetical you wanted. And they launch a nuclear strike at somewhere in the north of England, Manchester, Newcastle, right? And we now know they are planning to send another one to London. What does Jeremy Corbyn do? Who knows? I mean, and that's kind I'd of like the point. To know. No, I'd like no, to know. You... 
You are devoting 100 to 200 billion pounds of British taxpayer money in your stated manifesto policy to renew a system. I would like to know: Is Labour going to use it? So. This, this state, which has decided to, to nuke Britain, when they know that Britain has nuclear weapons and that we're part of NATO, so they've decided to nuke Britain, and they are, they're, they're confident, are they, that we wouldn't use our nuclear weapons in retaliation? I think, given and... that Jeremy Corbyn has said he would never use a nuclear weapon, they'd be confident, yes. Well, That's my point. That's I my whole that... point. Well, and my whole point is, is that if you're going to have nuclear weapons, there needs to be, as there has been for decades, an ambiguity around whether you but would Emily, use it or not. there is no ambiguity. And, and, and Jeremy and Corbyn has removed the ambiguity you keep saying you want. Jeremy Corbyn's stated position is he would never use a nuclear weapon. Then why the hell would you renew a system to protect us against it? Because the decision has been made by this current government. This current government has... You support has it. No, no, no. We have yes, said... Yes, yes, you do. No, Piers. You listen support to it. what I'm saying. The government have made a decision. They have decided to renew. That decision has been made and we are moving on. That's what I said five minutes when ago. When you're in government, Emily Thornbury, when you're in government, you are allowed to not do that kind of thing. You can say well, we well, don't so agree you, with so it. We would, so we would take away... So, OK, so you're suggesting... Oh, there are so many hypotheticals here. It's, this what? is crazy. So, None so of this is actually hypothetical. Yes, it is. Jeremy Corbyn has said he'd never use a nuclear weapon, and yet the party which he leads is committed to renewing a, a nuclear missile programme to defend this country against potential nuclear attack. We are not committed to renewing it. We are accepting the fact that the government has already committed us to spending all this money, and that decision has passed. You will remember that there was a campaign in the Labour Party against it, and that many of us felt that there were better uses of that money. But that decision has now been made. We have that nuclear deterrent, and frankly, my view is, is that we should remain ambiguous as to whether we would use it or not, just as previous Prime Ministers have done throughout the ages. Okay, can okay. I ask one final question about this? Can you paint for me a hypothetical situation where Jeremy Corbyn would use our nuclear missile defence system? No, I don't think this is. I don't think this is helpful. What I'm, I, I think that the the best way of going of, of, of my answering this is to tell you that the, this government has committed all this money. We do have a nuclear deterrent, and I don't think that it's right for us to say whether we would use it one way or another in whatever circumstances. It should remain ambivalent as it always has done. As Margaret Margaret, Tha if you okay. ask Margaret Thatcher so, whether she would have used okay. the nuclear weapons or I not, she would not have answered. And I think but that Jeremy is the best Corbyn position. Jeremy Corbyn did answer the question, Emily Thornbury. So was he wrong to answer the question? If you believe in ambiguity, was he wrong to answer the question? He definitively no. said he wouldn't use it. Everybody knows what Jeremy's strong position on this is and has been over... You know, has always been. I don't necessarily believe that it will be a decision that will be made by one individual. Okay. I suspect that the way that Jeremy makes decisions is that he takes advice and that we work collectively. I am not prepared to go into whether we would use nuclear weapons or not, whether we would make a decision collectively to use nuclear weapons or not, in what circumstances. All I can say is that we have it and that we're not prepared to say one way or the other in what circumstances, if there were circumstances to arise, okay. that okay. we might use it.